Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the principle of operation of a DC generator. Subscribe the channel for more electrical videos. The link is available in the description box. Soft copy of this material is available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. So the principle of operation of a DC generator, it is working on the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction based on the Faraday's law. The Faraday's law states that whenever a conductor cuts the magnetic line, lines of force and EMF is induced. So the conductor will cut the magnetic lines of force, then EMF will be generated. So we need to see where, what is the conductor and what how the magnetic field is produced. The conductor is nothing but a armature. The armature is the rotating part in that the conductor available. The magnetic field is produced by the field winding, stationary part, so that EMF is generated. When the armature rotates in the magnetic field, EMF is, rotate, EMF is generated. The detailed diagram available at that time, you are able to understand easily. The direction of the induced EMF is given by Fleming's right hand rule. Fleming right hand rule will give the direction of induced EMF. Fleming left hand rule will give, give the motor based on the DC motor. For generator it is applicable by Fleming's right hand rule. Now we will see the top, we we'll see the operation one by one. When DC supply is given to the field winding, the magnetic poles will get magnetized and produce the flux. That flux pass through the north pole to south pole through the air gap. So the first step we are giving the DC supply excitation to the field winding. So that these magnetic poles are the magnetized and it will produce the flux that is passing from south pole to north pole through the air gap. So stationary part. Field winding, the field windings are magnetized. Now the rotating part, the armature is rotated by means of prime mover in the magnetic field because generator is a mechanical energy is the input there is a rotation that is given by the prime mover so by using prime mover the armature is rotated mechanical energy is given so that the armature conductor cut the flux the flux already produced by field winding is cut by this armature conductor Therefore, the flux linking the conductor changes and EMF is induced in the armature winding. Then EMF is according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Right? The armature is rotated, already magnetic field is available. So, this armature conductor cut the magnetic flux. Due to rate of change of flux, EMF is induced based on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The EMF induced in the armature is alternating. By the use of commutator, the alternating voltage is converted into direct voltage. The direct voltage is taken to the electrical circuit through the brushes. I will see the diagram at the time you are able to understand. So the commutator used to collect the current, also convert into direct current, right? It is collected through the brushes. Now we will see the operation. The essential part of generator is conductor and magnetic field. The conductor is nothing but armature, rotating part. Magnetic field available as a stationary part or field winding. So based on that we can go for the operation. When the conductor move in the electric magnetic field, it cuts the magnetic lines of force and EMF is induced. This conductor nothing but armature. When the armature is rotating, in a magnetic field, it cuts the flux, it cuts the magnetic lines of force and EMF is induced. For understanding purpose, let us consider a single turn of rectangular coil ABCDA placed in the magnetic field produced by permanent magnet or electromagnet. Right? For understanding purpose, we consider rectangular coil with ABCDA with a single turn. Normally, it is a circular form, but for understanding purpose, we consider rectangular coil. The coil side AB, the coil side AB is connected to the slip ring S1 and CD is connected to the slip ring S2. AB is connected to S1, CD is connected to S2. 
the brushes B1 collect the current from A, AB through S1 and give to the external load external load circuit ML right so AB is connected to the brush S1 connected to the slip ring S1 the brush B1 is collecting the current and is given to giving to the external load of ML so AB S1 brush is B1 and the load current load load circuit is ML similarly brush B2 collect from CD through the S2 slip ring and giving the external circuit ML the coil is rotated in anti clockwise direction in the magnetic field as the coil takes different position in the magnetic field the flux linking and also changes hence the mag then the magnitude of emf also changes so we are rotating the coil so that different position will be available so due to the different position the fluxes are changes rate of change of flux also there so that the emf also changes so the brush b1 is connected to terminal m and brush b2 is connected to the terminal l right so here so the brush b1 collect the current from ab through the slip ring s1 and give it to the external circuit ml similarly cd through the s2 and connect to the load circuit ml now we will go to the detailed diagram so first we will consider the position 1 that is 0 degree we will go to the entire circle 0 degree 90 180 270 again 0 degree 4 positions available so we start with the 0 degree right position 1 at the 0 degree now we consider one the rectangular coil for understanding purpose a b c d a rectangular coil so this is nothing but a magnet either permanent magnet or electromagnet this is called a field windings these are these two are field winding one is n pole and another one is s pole so it is named as a b c and d right so here we have the two slip ring s1 and s2 the brush b1 collect the current from slip ring s1 brush b2 collect the current from s2 so the four position available one two three four the position one is the zero degree right it is vertically available the rectangular is vertically available position 2 90 degree position 3 again 180 degree again vertical position 4 270 degree right so let us assume that this rectangular coil is placed vertically so that the space covered between n and n pole will be very less right if it is placed horizontally so the entire entire space is occupied by this rectangular coil now if it is placed in the vertical means only less amount of space will be covered by the rectangular coil right so due to that what will happen the flux coming from n pole is easily passed to the s pole right the fluxes are moving from n pole to s pole easily the area covered by the coil is very less so what is another term rate of change of flux is very less all the fluxes from n pole easily give, goes to the s pole right there is no rate of change of flux but in based on the faraday's law the important thing is the emf is induced when there is a rate of change of flux but in this position due to the coil is placed in a vertical manner all the fluxes from n pole is linked with the s pole the rate of change of flux is very very less so the emf induced also very less in this position now we'll see the description when the coil is at position one flux linking the coil is maximum that is the flux from n pole is easily linked with the n pole is easily linked with the s pole because the area occupied by the coil is very less but the rate of change of flux is very less that is d pi by dt is minimum the flux linkage is maximum but the rate of change of flux is minimum d pi by dt is minimum so at position 1 the flux linkage is maximum but rate of change of flux d pi by dt is minimum so that emf is purely based on d pi by dt d pi by dt is minimum so emf also minimum that is almost zero 
at position 0 the em of induced is 0 right now we will go to the next position so the second position is 90 degree the coil is rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degree so that see this it is horizontally available the coil is horizontally placed so the area covered by the coil is more in between n and s pole the almost the almost the area is covered by this coil in previous case it is placed in a vertical manner so that the area covered is less so the flux linking from n coil to s coil is very minimum that is rate of change of flux is maximum right because the em of induced purely based on rate of change of flux so the flux from n pole is not easily linked with the s pole the rate of change of flux is more because this the coil the area is covered by this coil right so that is given the coil is rotated in anti clockwise by an angle 90 degree so that it is placed in a horizontal manner in this position the flux linking the coil is minimum but rate of change of flux is maximum right the only the flux few flux will link but the rate of change of flux will be more right so based on that flux linkage is minimum but rate of change of flux is maximum so the emf is based on the rate of change of flux so the emf also maximum right at 0 degree the flux is 0 at 90 degree the flux is maximum so in between 0 to 90 degree it is slowly increasing increasing from 0 and reaches the maximum value at 90 degree right so in this position the current flows downward in the conductor ab and current flows upward in the conductor cd now we'll go to the second third position the third position 180 degree again the coil is rotated by an anti clockwise direction by 90 degree so that again it will come in a vertical manner but the directions are different a b c d yeah, earlier in position 1 the a b c d like this here the a is available now the a is rotated to this position so it is very similar to the position 1 but only the current direction is different right so the area covered is very less vertical it is placed in a vertical so many areas are available so the flux from n pole is easily linked with the s pole so the rate of change of flux is minimum if the rate of change of flux is minimum means the em of induced also minimum it is almost zero so in the previous position the em of induced is maximum here minimum so in between this 90 degree to 180 degree it is decreasing from maximum to zero right so the details are given the coil is rotated again by an angle 90 degree the flux linkage is maximum but rate of change of flux is minimum so that the em of induced also minimum right so it is it is decreasing from maximum to minimum in this position from second position to third position the em of induced is decreasing from maximum to minimum now we'll go to the fourth position so in the fourth position again it is rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degree so again the coil is placed in a horizontal manner very similar to the second position but the direction is different a b c d earlier a b c d like this now it is rotated so again in this position the flux linkage is very very less so the rate of change of flux is more the flux not easily link from n pole to s pole because area is covered by the coil so that the rate of change of flux is maximum is given here in this position flux linkage of the coil is minimum but the rate of change of flux is maximum so that em of induced also maximum so in the previous case em of induced is zero now it is maximum right so it means that from zero it is slowly increasing and reaches the maximum value now we'll see the further details the direction of induced emf is given by fleming's right hand rule the current flows downward in the conductor cd and upward in the conductor ab so that is clearly given in the diagram the direction of current is dc l m b a right now we'll see the diagram so that easily you can easily understand so this is the induced emf so positions are given 1 2 3 4 again 1 so in the position 1 
the EM of induced is 0 in position to maximum. So, in between 1 and 2, it is slowly increasing. So, while rotating the coil from 0 degree to 90 degree, the EMF also increases. At 90 degree, it is maximum. Again, while moving from 90 degree to 180 degree, it is decreasing from maximum to 0 and reaches the 0 value at this 180 degree. Again, it is rotating in reverse direction. From 180 to 270, it is 0 to maximum. From position 4 to position 1 again, it is decreasing. It reaches the 0 value. Right? So, it keep on changes 0 maximum, then 0 again maximum and 0. But the current direction is reversed because the conductors are moving in anti clockwise direction. So, the current will flow A to B or B to A, upward or downward accordingly, it will change. But here we are discussing the DC generator, this is the alternating current AC. So, that AC can be converted into DC, unidirectional DC like this 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that is done by, so the alternating output is converted to unidirectional output or DC output by replacing the slip ring. Slip ring means it keep on changing the position, right. The current will flow A to B, after that the current will flow B to A, slip. It is the meaning slip is keep on changes. But while using the commutator segments or split ring, right? This the output is replacing the slip ring by commutator segment or a split ring. Split ring means when the conductor position changes, it will change, it will not change the direction, right? So always it will flow like this in a unidirection. So by using the sli split ring, we can convert the alternating current into direct current, right? So in this video, we discuss the operation of a DC generator, how the EMFs are induced. So, from 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, again 0 degree, 0 degree minimum, 90 degree maximum. That means slowly increasing from 0 to maximum, 90 degree. 180 degree again minimum, decreasing from maximum to minimum. Again, in 270 degree it is maximum, right? It is slowly increasing. So, that same thing repeats, right? Subscribe this channel for more videos. The soft copy available in the drive link is given in the description box. There are other video links also available in the description box. Thank you.